And welcome back to Legally Speaking with the McClario Firm. Well, legal terms can be very complex and difficult to understand. So today, we've got someone here to break it down for us and make it easy. Yeah, we're going to talk about financial strategies if someone needs long-term care. Max Forty is an attorney with McClario, and he joins us now with more information on what's called the Medicaid Spend Down. Great to see you. Yeah, good see to you see you guys, Max. too. Thanks. I was reading a little bit about this online. I'm like... This is complicated. <laughs> yes, it is very complicated, and I could probably talk about it for you know hours on hours, which sometimes I do with my clients. I uh, bet. And what does it mean? What's a what does Medicaid yeah. spend down mean? So essentially, it's you or you for your loved one trying to get your money and assets in order in order to qualify for the eligibility requirements of Medicaid. Obviously, there's different you know routes and other ways that you can do this, which I will talk about. But for the most part, it's making sure that A, they, sh they might need to go through this way or not. Why, why does someone want to be on Medicaid, I guess, first and foremost? Yeah. What is the reason? So the reason is mostly financial. Um, sometimes people don't have the money. I mean, facilities and nursing homes and all those places, they can cost a lot of money and that mm -hmm. price is always going up. So a lot of times it's, you know, taking a look at assets and income and saying, I think this is the best option for me. This is the only way that I can get the right care and also have some place to actually stay and yeah. live and move into. You know, everyone's situations are different, but that's kind of the overview. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you talk about assets and income. Um, what about exempt versus non exempt assets? That's probably yeah. really important. Yeah, so obviously, when you're looking at your assets, there are different kinds exempt, non exempt. Exempt are usually things like a house, a mm. car certain you know monetary values of burial trusts those kind of things but when it comes to non-exempt it's you know extra properties extra houses other cars boats things like that that would add to your overall asset valuation um, that would kind of take away from your ability to get on medicaid and that's why when the spend down comes in you kind of look at what you have and a, what you can kind of get rid of, mm -hmm. spend down oh. to get closer to the eligibility requirements. Oh, okay. Yeah. And with there, there's also transfers like you can do within your investments to divest from things, right? Yes. And, and do you have to go five years back or what does the five year look yeah, like? Yeah. So when someone applies for Medicaid, um, they take a five year look back at all your financial Got it. financials, your banks, your investments, your, you know, even your life insurance policies, your assets. And during that time, I mean, if you've made any significant transfers, I mean, sell a house, yeah. transfer a house, those kind of things, it can set you into a penalty period where, you know, from the date that that transfer happened, there's a five year penalty essentially. Got it. And the only way to get out of that is either to get it back and then, you know, spend it down or there are other ways. I mean, there's a lot of. It's a lot of planning. Yes. A lot and of that's technical kind of, aspects yes. yeah. to it. Too. And be smart. Again, yeah. I could go into depth on those, and I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah, but you're trying to keep it simple, simple. for people to yep. understand. Yeah. But I, I think about the financial eligibility that you talked about, and there mm -hmm. are things like spend, the spend down as an individual mm -hmm. is, is one concept, sort of, and then the community spouse exemption, which are yeah. two different things. So right? your requirements for financial eligibility for an individual are significantly lower. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's you know there's a cap in Wisconsin, at least. It's $2,000 total asset level that you mm. have to spend down to. But when you get a community spouse involved, AKA your spouse that's still living, um, there's more exemptions, there's more ways to protect assets per se, um, because you do get like a step up in order to not take everything away from the spouse who's still living at home or living, you know, not with you in the facility. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, you don't want to take away from someone who's not getting Medicaid but you do want to limit them so that it is reasonable that their partner is getting Medicaid. That makes sense. So what are, are there some simple spend down methods for people? Yeah. So the most simple things I like to say, if you do have a house, um, just upgrade it. Oh. I mean, there are things that, as long as the house is considered exempt um, right. in the eyes of Medicaid, you can get a new roof, new furnace, you know, paint the house, things like that. I mean they do cost a good amount of money. Yeah. So it is easy to spend a couple thousand dollars here and there on that. Um, sometimes I tell clients to buy a new car because if it's <laughs> exempt for them, if they are able to, you know, still drive, yeah. um, 
in that sense, getting a new car, treat yourself, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. there are things like irre irrevocable burial trust. Yes. So as I talked about earlier with the assets and everything, there is a limit on irrevocable burial trust. That number changes all the time. It's, you know, four to 5,000 around there. But simply just going to a funeral home or a cemetery or a cremation facility um, and paying money, putting money down to say, this is what I want. Yeah. I'm going to put this here and you can use it in the future. Those kind of things help. Um, yeah. It's yeah. so complicated. I think the idea is meet with an expert. Yes. yes. You yes. can help. Get a consultation. Sort yes. Out all of that. Yep. Exactly. Good to have you here, Max. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You can call the Clario firm to set up a free consultation. Their number is 262-251-4210 or visit mcclario.com.